Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put in my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to talk about uh, identifying our triggers, uh, a great DBT, distress tolerance skill, mindfulness, and meditation. Uh, the Lord has a lot to say about that, but before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha, you're the Omega, you're all that exists. Everything that we do, everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory. We give praise and honor and glory to your holy name for all the ways that you're working in our life, Lord. And we thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space right here and right now, Lord. And we ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know. Not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you so much for being here today. I'm really excited about this topic. Let's take a pause for a moment. Let's take a step back and breathe and pause between the in-breath and the out-breath. And just be aware. How are you? How are you doing? How are things going in your world? Are there any challenging circumstances that are happening in your life? You know, sometimes life is much easier than others, and sometimes life can be really challenging. Um, but the Lord is with us every moment of every hour of every day. Our wonderful Lord Jesus died on the cross for our sins, my sins, and your sins, because he loves us that much. So remember that whenever you're going through a challenging circumstance, all you need to do is to repent of your sins, put them at the foot of the cross, ask the Lord to forgive you, and breathe in his grace, mercy, and peace, and commit your life to him. He's so ready, willing, and able to help us at all times, always. And all we need to do is to call him right into our hearts. And so today I have my sweet little dog with me, if you hear some extra breathing. Um, I never know whether to have him be in another room or have him be here. So today he's with us. Um, he may be chomping on a bone. Uh, but I want to encourage you to think about your circumstances and where is it that you may need some help. You know, sometimes we can just say, Lord, help us and just feel his presence and um, just feel him giving us uh, more strength to endure our circumstances. And sometimes it's more challenging. I like to think of uh, one of my favorite go-to scriptures, Romans 8, 28, where the Lord reminds us and he says, all things, all things work together for good for those that love him and are called to his purpose. And so when we can just remember that he does indeed love us and he has called us to his purpose, it can help us to remember uh, that we're doing things for a higher calling, a higher level, and that it's okay to go through all our circumstances. But sometimes those circumstances are so challenging and we need extra help. And that's where I like to refer to uh, Marsha Linehan, a wonderful um, theorist in behavioral therapy that came up with this incredible system of therapy that has helped millions of people around the world. Uh, remember that we are a spirit, we have a soul, and the soul is comprised of the mind, the will, and the emotions, and we live in a body. We have so much to take care of. So when we focus on the mind, we can think about these um, DBT skills, dialectical behavioral therapy, and today we're going to go over one in particular, uh, distress tolerance. Have you felt any distress in your life? I know I certainly have, and this is just such a wonderful uh, skill set. It's an acronym, uh, the word STOP, S-T-O-P, that you can kind of tuck away in your toolbox and pull out the next time that you're feeling triggered. So we're going to start with the S, and the S in stop literally just says stop. Take a moment, be aware of what your trigger is, 
and just freeze. Stop if you can. Um, you may even want to visualize a stop sign or the, you know, a traffic light and just seeing the red, just stop. Freeze and stop right there. That's why I'm wearing red today, to just remember to see red and to just stop. The T in stop stands for remembering to take a step back. So we can do that together. We can take a step back, breathe, pause, invite the Lord into our heart. He is so ready, willing, and able to help us. Remember that we have the Trinity, the Father who made us, the Son who saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is with us at all times, always. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. So we can take a moment and take a step back, pause, and breathe. And we may even want to do that square breath, and we can do that together where we breathe in, and then pause, which is the top part of the square, breathe out through your mouth, and then pause. We can do that again, breathing in the Holy Spirit, and then pausing, and then breathing out what you're ready to let go of, put it right at the foot of the cross, and then pause. We'll do that one more time. Take a big breath in through your nose, breathing in the Holy Spirit, and pause, and then breathe out, and just let go of what you're ready to let go of, and then pause. So that is the T in uh, stop, taking a step back. And then the third letter is O, and that's to simply observe what's going on. So after we've taken a step back, breathe, pause, pray, invite the Lord in, let's observe what's going on. Let's look at what's happening outside of us. What are the circumstances? What was it that triggered you? What was it that happened that shifted you? And also be aware of what's happening inside of you. Do you feel like um, you need to work on PEMS? PEMS is physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. Uh, do you feel like you need to take a nap? You know, they say many problems can be solved simply by taking a good meal in and taking a good nap. So physically, how is it that you're needing to help yourself? emotionally what might it be that you need to do for yourself emotionally mentally what might be some positive thoughts that you can have and then spiritually again inviting the lord in um you know i i've mentioned many times that i am a school nurse during the day and in the evening i have a private practice i'm a clinical pastoral counselor a nurse a life coach and a therapist and during the school day it's the sweetest thing i work with very sweet little children from the ages of five actually four uh, to 11. And I have these wonderful opportunities all day long to work with these precious cherubs. And, you know, I'm thinking of a couple of kids in particular. Uh, when someone gets injured that comes into my office, um, often they'll, they'll be terrified and they'll panic and they'll start crying and screaming. You know, there might just be a little cut on their finger. And the first thing that I will do after I'm putting pressure on the finger so it stops the bleeding, I will just say, okay, let's breathe together. And we breathe and we do that, that square breath. And just by doing that, that helps them get out of fight or flight and gets them more in the rest and digest and that can help them to be more in their body. Then there's another sweet child that um, has an active imagination. And sometimes if he goes into the bathroom, he'll come into my office and he'll tell me that he's feeling nauseous because of what he saw in the bathroom. Or, uh, not to be gross, sorry, or let's say he's in the cafeteria and he's not liking what he's observing someone eating and he will be nauseous. So I will often say, okay, just go in the bathroom, wash your face, come out. And I want you to label five things that you really love. And so then he'll, he'll give me this whole list of five things that he really loves. And then he feels so much better. And that nausea goes away. So that's what we're talking about when we refer to being mindful. We, mindfulness just simply means to, uh, I'll give you a definition actually, a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calming and accepting the feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. So it's an opportunity to really be present with our thoughts. 
be in that prefrontal cortex, that very front part of our brain and ask yourself questions. What is it that you're needing? How can you shift your focus mindfully so that you can feel so much better? And that's where we're going to with the letter P, the last letter in stop, and that's to proceed mindfully. So very often when we get triggered, we go into fight or flight and we lose our thought process and we react. We want to stop that reaction, take a step back, breathe, pause, pray, observe what's going on, and then proceed mindfully. Another word that often shows up with mindfulness is meditation. And meditation is just simply focusing one's thoughts on fill in the blank, whatever it is that you're choosing to meditate on. We're so blessed as Christians to have uh, the Lord's living word, the Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth. So meditate on these verses. Allow your thoughts to stay present on our wonderful Lord. It will help you to feel so much better. So again, let's review this distress tolerance skill from Marsha Linehan from DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. Stop. The next time you're feeling triggered, put this in your toolbox. And the S stands for literally just stopping. Just stopping, seeing a traffic light, seeing red, seeing the traffic light, and just freeze. That's the S. The T is to take a step back, breathe, pause, pray, invite the Lord in, and just be present. The O is observing what's going on, but there's two things. There's two levels to that. Be aware of what's happening externally that's triggering you, and also what's happening internally, and what might it be that you can do to shift so that you feel better. And then the P is to proceed mindfully. What might it be that you can focus on so that you can be more present? Sometimes we simply need to be aware of our process. So right now, I'm going to ask you, what is your feel-good number? 10 being the best, zero being the worst. What number would you say that you're at right now? Just to observe and be aware. Then the distress number, which would be the opposite of that, on a 10 to zero scale, 10 being really intense pain, whether that be physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and zero being no pain at all, how high is your distress right now? Just be aware of what number that is. And then percent present. If you were to have 100% of energy, how much of your energy is in the past? How much of your energy is in the future? And how much of your energy is fully present right now? The goal is always to have 100% of our energy fully present. But there's no shame in any of that. It's just simply to be aware of what your uh, process is right now and how it might be that you can ask the Lord to help you through all that you're experiencing right in this very moment. So let's go to scripture now and let's delve deeper into God's word. So we'll start off with Romans 15, 13, where it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love that reminder so much. Those key words that may the God of hope, he truly is a God of hope. And he fills us with joy and peace if we can just focus on him and trust in him so that you may overflow, overflow completely with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I had a client the other day that was going through a really challenging circumstance. And she said to me, you know what, Dr. Patty, I am not going to allow the enemy to steal my hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love thinking about that that we're going to have these opposite forces, these dark forces, the enemy, the devil, whatever you want to refer to, when we go through this broken world that we live in. And we don't ever have to let the enemy or anyone steal our hallelujah. We can always give praise and honor and glory to our wonderful Lord, no matter what we're going through, and just trust that he is with us every moment of every hour of every day. So we'll go to Chronicles 1634, where it says, 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithfulness and his faithful love endures forever. Such a beautiful reminder that we can praise him and thank him. No matter what you're going through, take a moment, challenge yourself, and allow the Lord to help you to come up with what it is that you can thank him for each and every moment, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through. In Psalm 62, 5, it says, For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. Amen. I love how the psalmist is talking to his own soul. And what's the soul? The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. So sometimes we may need to just remind our mind, will, and emotions to take a step back, breathe, pause, and pray, and remember that for God alone, oh my soul, wait in silence, for hope is from him. Amen. And sometimes it's a really good idea to come up with what's referred to as a safe place. So you may want to think about throughout your journey, what is a place that you visited and where you can go, whether, whether that be literally or whether that just be simply in your mind where you can visit that safe place where you can just feel peaceful, calm, and relaxed and trust that the Lord is with you every moment. In Psalm 48, 9, it says, Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Amen. And whether we go to a house of worship where we absolutely meditate on his unfailing love, or whether it be that we focus on within us, remember our bodies are his holy temple, and we can just focus on the Holy Spirit within us. It could help us to feel so much better. In Joshua 1, 8, it says, keep this book of the law always on your lips and meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Amen. So I really encourage you, if you're not in the habit already, to download a Bible app. I'll put it in the description section. You can just um, click on it and download it and you can press play and just listen to the Lord's wonderful instructions or soak in, you know, get a really good uh, study Bible and get in the habit of knowing God's word and meditate on these verses day and night. It will absolutely help you to feel so much better. In Psalm 37, 7, it says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. I love this reminder so much, particularly when I am noticing that I'm running before God. I am a multitasker. I get a lot done. I have a full plate and I always have. I probably always will. I feel like the Lord calls me to so many opportunities. So sometimes I love just basking in this verse, remembering to be still, to carve out that time where I can just be fully present with the Lord and still and allow him to lead me. In Luke 5, 16, it says, Jesus withdrew often to lonely places and prayed. He's such a beautiful role model. All throughout scripture, there's so many beautiful examples of how our wonderful Lord Jesus was out in the garden, was out on the mountaintop, was out in the desert, and he was alone in silence praying to Abba Father, connecting with Abba Father, and filling with his Holy Spirit. In Matthew 14, 23, it says, After he had sent the crowds away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was alone. So I ask you, where in your life are you carving out time to be quiet, and still and alone where you can fully feel his presence. In Mark 1 35 it says very early in the morning while it was still dark Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Amen. Just beautiful example after example of how our wonderful Lord Jesus went out by himself alone in silence and solitude and prayed to Abba Father. In 1 John 5.14, it says, This is the confidence 
we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen. So it's a wonderful invitation to rely fully on his Holy Spirit and set our own personal will with his will. And then when we pray, when we speak to him and ask him for what it is that we're needing, he indeed hears us. And I love how he responds to us in Jeremiah 29, 12, where it says, then you will call on me. This is God speaking. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Amen. I love how these verses go together. So we're asked to come to him. And when we come to him and pray our heart out to him, he indeed listens to us. And we'll end with Psalm 4610, where it says, Be still and know that I am God. I love that song by Amy Grant. I'll put that in the description section. But I really love that reminder that we're being called throughout our day, throughout our night, to be still and know that our wonderful God is God. And we can just take a step back. We can get out of fight or flight and we could take a step back, breathe, pause, and pray and invite our wonderful Lord into our heart. It will help us to feel so much better. So I encourage you this week in your quiet time, in your self-reflection time, be aware of these verses and also give yourself the opportunity to practice this acronym from DBT, STOP. Again, we're simply stopping when we're triggered, then we're taking a step back for T, we're observing what's going on externally and also observing what's going on internally, and then we're proceeding mindfully. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I am praying for you every single day, and I ask that you please pray for me too. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. As I mentioned, I am a clinical pastoral counselor, a nurse, a life coach, and a therapist. I would love to hear from you, and I would love to work with you. My email address is clinicalpastoralcounseling3 for trinity at gmail.com. That's clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.